back from the break uh, covering more Thermaltake booth stuff. We have a sneak peek for you guys at two brand new products. One is a prototype and one will be available shortly. We have the LED ring fans, correct? Yeah. Okay. The, these are the um, these are, are basically our high static pressure or built for radiator fans. These have a rubber mounting anti-vibration, but more than anything, the important part about these guys are going to be the LED ring design. So basically, you've all seen where you have multiple LEDs shining a, just a straight bar of light through. Just, you know, it, it's the same thing you see everywhere. So we want to do something different so that not just when you look at it straight like this, you can see the ring, but as you can see along the side, when you have that radiator on the top of your chassis, Correct. It'll look you're really going to cool. see a nice little line going across. Mm -hmm. It just creates a cool accent piece. Not to mention you can get them non-lighted if you prefer no lighting. That, that's an option as well. But one thing, as you can tell, Jason, one of the worst things, as I'm sure you know, with fan noise is once you put them on a radiator, you can, that's the right. worst case scenario. So the first way we wanted to demo them was we set them on a radiator. So you can hear. You've got four fans running here. Can you even hear them? And uh, to give you guys an example. Completely silent. Even two-inch range. Now tell me, how do you feel about the pressure and feel the airflow from that? That's actually a, quite a bit of airflow. You got you got some good flow coming off of that. So basically, with the static pressure, you can push through pretty much any radiator, which is really cool, as you know. But also, these can be used as chassis fans as well because they're not high noise. They create a decent amount of static pressure, good airflow, and they got a cool lighting effect. Or without lighting, you that's your option. But it just gives you another cool toy that you can add to your chassis that actually is really functional and keeping it really cool, which is something that's one of our core, uh, one of our core beliefs is making sure that we keep your chassis running cool. That's what Thermaltake's all about. Easy to see in the Core X1 and Core X series chassis. When can we expect to see these become available? I realize they're prototypes. Do you have a ballpark range? Probably around um, Q1, maybe end of Q1, around maybe March to April time. Very cool. It, it just depends on how everything goes with it. It could even be sooner. It just depends how quickly we finish it, get it packaged, and get it to you guys. I mean, and and these are all running off of your new touchscreen fan controller. Absolutely. Let me lift that up here. You can go ahead and just grab it, and you can see it's connected here, so we kind of got to be careful. But it's all touchscreen, so there's no knobs or sliders, nothing you got to deal with. You literally can touch it like that. You can see even my pinky. I can touch each one, change it. You can manually change it there. And if you want to see something really fun, what I like about this fan controller is when you stop a fan, it oh. will actually let you know. So if you have a CPU cooler plugged into this and the fan stops, you're going to know something's up. Especially, let's say you have a pump plugged into that. Very cool. So your water cooling pump, how many times have you heard about where yep, someone it has dies water cooling? And you burn oh, up. I have this awesome water cooling. Now my system's shutting off. What's going on? Oh, my pump died. You're going to know that pump died within 5 to 10 seconds. Very, very cool. Very cool. Well, we have a little bit more to take a look at. Stay tuned with us. We're going to move on to yet more stuff. Back after the break with uh, some awesome new applications for your PC, power supplies. Uh, tell me a bit more about the DPS. Well, apparently it's a really awesome DPS app we've got going here. Basically, this is our digital power supply. We have a V2.0 coming really soon. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is this is where sh you can basically monitor all of your power components, as you saw before. But one really cool part about the new 2.0 version is that we actually added some really cool features, such as monitoring GPU and CPU. And we've got to scroll through all of the data we give you already. So once you get to that, you can see you can actually watch your wattage and amperage draw, voltage, and all that. And remember when we talked about this before and you were able to log it all to databases and be able to see all your usage? Correct. Okay. Well, now we took that a step further. Now you can create a login, and this will actually upload as cloud data every 20 seconds. Then you can take your little mobile device here, and now you can see all this stuff on your mobile device, so no matter where you're at, you could be here and watching your system at home while you're here so at So that's Vegas. cool. So if you've got a machine set up at home to number cruncher or, or to download and you're worried about something happening, you can log in and make sure it's everything's running cool. Not just that, but imagine like a, a more industrial application like someone with 50 plus machines. Mm -hmm. You can have them all logged in the same account. You log in, you've got a whole listing of machines. You can check each one, one by one, and see exactly how they're performing. Maybe a system's on when it shouldn't be. Whatever it is, we offer you the complete power management solution now, not just a power supply. Because previously, when we go to sell a power supply, it's like, hey, Jason, here you go. Here's a power supply. 
Okay, you're done. That's the end of it. Well, good luck. That one might, might not work. It's probably a <laughs> dummy sample. <laughs> but you plug it in. Please let me know how it works. <laughs> but after that, now we have this. So basically, you actually have an add-on. You have an add-on solution so that not just power, but you actually have control over the power. You actually can see what's being used, how it's being used, how you can better manage your power. And let's face it, when you're talking like industrial application, the most uh, overutilized utility is going to be something like your power. Correct. They don't pay attention yep. to how much things like PCs are drawing. They don't realize those can be substantial when you've got 50 of them or more. What about rolling out this tech to server-side stuff and being able to m manage and, and check on all of your server uh, uptimes, power wattage, consumption, and all that? It's possible, but that's a lot different, as you know, a lot more intricate solution. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you do need the digital controller to be able to read that data. So you'd literally have to re-engineer the actual, uh, you'd actually have to re-engineer the actual blade itself, because that would require the, inter the intermediate circuitry to read this data. I think that would be uh, very handy, at least in the enterprise scale of markets. Oh, I agree. So. It's just, it's something we'd have to look, it's something we have to look at down the road as you're able to integrate that into the, uh, like the, Swap, swap old power supplies, things like that. Very cool. Well, thank you for a, a, a cool uh, new feature and new product. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, a little bit more. Uh, stay tuned with us until after the break. As I alluded before the break, uh, we're here back to show you a really cool gaming combo that's not going to bust your budget. Uh, coming in at about $29.99, you get a keyboard and a mouse. You get a keyboard with a surprising number of features. Uh, really good tactile feedback, almost mechanical feedback, back click keyboard, some metal accents, uh, pass through, so that if you spill on the keyboard, it'll go through instead of killing your keyboard. Uh, very comfortable, of course, lit mouse. Um, plenty of uh, gaming buttons. You've got some, you got some buttons you can probably macro. Um, optical, of course. This is the commander combo. Uh, Shannon, please tell me a bit more. Okay, basically you covered most of it. The whole point of this is actually to provide a good value solution to when you get a gaming keyboard and mouse. Because so many times you go, like let's say to a store shelf or you go online and you find hundreds of different models, a keyboard and a mouse, but you never have something really matched together. So we right. wanted something for people who are looking for, I just want a good match set, doesn't matter about too much about, you know, basically just wants a good price and something that has good features. So as you can see here, we actually put our metal keycap set because we actually replaced the tops with uh, Cherry MX style or uh, TT Sports certified style switches. So as long as you use those kind of keycaps, you can replace these and do what you want with them. And basically, like you said, this is a plunger style key switch. So it actually has a very good mechanical like feel, a very right. linear, just straight right. down feel. But it does have a little bit of squish at the bottom because it is a rubber dome at the bottom. So that's something to keep in mind. Then you have the mouse. It's a standard optical mouse. Just does its job, nice DPI range, side buttons, just gives you the functionality you'd need for your gameplay. This is just straight up, as simple as it comes, just a gaming keyboard and mouse set, just something you can plug into any PC and just get running. And I don't know anywhere else that you guys are going to go and uh, find a gaming matched keyboard and mouse with this range of features for $29.99. You're talking about a, a, uh, a, a full keyboard here with uh, good tactile feedback, a braided cable USB for both the keyboard and the mouse, um, just a range of features you, you usually find on more expensive keyboards that you're, you're getting for $29.99. Again, like I said, the guys at Thermal Take have definitely been busy. And we're going to bring you some really cool products right now. Stay tuned. Something you guys are going to want. We're back after the break and with a really, really cool product. Any of you guys who have stayed tuned for uh, our reviews of Thermal Take equipment over the years have seen the Poseidon Z. Well, Thermal Take took it one step further like a lot of other manufacturers are doing, but they did it with class. You've got the Poseidon Z RGB. Individually backlit keyboard programmable uh, keys. Shannon, this thing is awesome. Tell me a bit more. Well, it's like you said. It basically, it's per key backlighting. It has full RGB capability. It has a ton of different functions and features, such as you can actually take, I mean, it's all going to be done via software, but basically we just actually programmed it via some functions so that you can kind of demo some of the different lighting effects. There's all different types, like for instance, here, hold this one second, I'll show you a few. Sure. Just hold it up for me. So as you can see, it follows through, like as you're typing, it actually fades away and follows you, it'll follow your typing. Just some really cool lighting effects, different things you can do. You can have it cycle through colors, but we did this all so that you can just demo and see 
all the different per key backlighting, but you still get the same functionality, durability, stability that you get with the Poseidon Z. You just now have the new lighting effect. So this is more the fancy factor. And we have something that actually has some, we have two different keyboards coming up that I really want to show you that have some really cool functionality built in beyond just obviously the bling factor you got here. I love the bling factor and you guys, I mean, you got to love the bling factor. Bling alone is awesome. Now, when is this going to be available? This should be available actually coming within the coming months here shortly. Very cool. What price tag are we going to look at? Well, that would be right here. It'd be right around $99.99. So you're talking right around 100 bucks, similar to what you had at the Poseidon Z, slightly higher because, as you know, adding the RGB function does add some different components we have to add to there. But we tried to keep it as low as possible, which has kind of been our target, like I explained to you before, with the Poseidon Z line itself. When we switched to our TT Sports certified switches, we wanted to make sure we offered as much value as possible with this line of keyboards. Very cool. Now, any of you guys who have uh, been following your individually programmable RGB backlit keyboards, um, you're going to realize that $99 price tag is in the order of $50 to $100 less than almost every other keyboard that has that feature on the market right now. So, again, you're getting the Thermaltake brand, cool quality, all the features you want at a cheaper price than almost everybody else. Stay tuned, we're gonna take a look at more. We're back from the break, I see a really, really cool mouse here. Um, this almost reminds me of an old school MS style mouse. It, it feels just perfect in your hand. Um, nice weight to it. Um, it, it it's got a, a great feedback. Of course, that's a largely due to the surface we've got here, but uh, this, is, this is a really cool mouse. Tell me a little bit about the Ventus X. This Ventus X, we went back to a classic style shape. The original Ventus was very popular, ambidextrous mouse, solid, good configurability, just worked really well. This one we wanted to deliver like the ultimate gaming mouse for those who are looking for something for a classic styling, just really awesome performance. It's a laser mouse. It just does the job. It's not, it's nothing, you know, it, it's not going to have spinning wheels. It's not going to be anything crazy. It just does what it needs to do to give you a great gaming experience, including having the ventilated area through the so that your palm doesn't sit against this and just get super sweaty or anything. Yep. It just gives you everything you need to deliver an awesome gaming experience without any fluff. And, and I really love the, I, I can't express that enough, I really love the way it feels in my palm. Um, we have a really cool keyboard over here that I just can't wait to take a look at. Apparently it's got some really unique features. Let's take a look. Cut. All right. So this is the Poseidon Z, the original Poseidon Z, but we've included an added twist here, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's actually called the Poseidon Z Touch Bar. So with that, let's go ahead and show you. There's some really cool features here. First of all, when you're typing, I mean, Jason, you, you have to do a lot of editing, writing some reviews, stuff like that. So let's say I started to type something to you, and I was to, you know, mess your name up. Well, then I got to reach over my mouse, find, find it, cut across, try to delete it, and retype it, right? Well, now imagine I mistype it, don't even leave the keyboard, I now see that? It very, very cool. Itself, and now I can fix it without ever leaving the home row. So basically, what it is, is we've actually integrated a touch bar into the space bar itself. So you slide across like this, it selects lots of new types. But that's not it. I mean, that itself is really cool, especially for someone a writer like you who's typing all the time. Because how many times have you, oh, i got to find my pointer, then got to go across, hope you highlight the right area. You don't have to right. reading half of your article by accident. Right. I mean, I'm, I, I imagine that's probably something you've run into at least once. Oh, quite a bit more than that. But so what you're talking about is being able to really never have to leave your keyboard. Your hands never have to leave your keyboard. You're doing all of your, your writing right at the keyboard without having to mess with your mouse. More than basic stuff. Yeah, more than moving around and navigating somewhere. That's about it. But now you take like this, then you can see. I can even navigate your website directly from this. Or you can even zoom in or zoom out. <coughs> to view stuff all through this. But that even, that, that, that itself is it's another awesome feature. But then you add something like this where you can actually add macros. So let's say we take it. So you've got what looks like one, two, three, four, five macro programmable zones built into the space bar. Up to five. Or you can set two, one, whatever you want to be. But as you see, you just slide across that macro zone, push the space bar, it starts typing. And you've programmed in what you want that macro to do. Exactly. So you just go across, boom, boom, boom. You hit it, and it just types in. 
Very cool. I, d I cannot think of another product on the market that is comes even close to that kind of feature. Well, you know, we w I mean, there's only so many ways you can make a keyboard. We wanted to find a way to make the keyboard special and something you can actually have a tangible feature <laughs> that adds to your experience, not just gaming, not just surfing the web, writing basically across the board. Anybody who does a, a good deal of typing or writing or, or sits at their keyboard and does a good deal of pro word processing, this is going to be really revolutionary for them. Oh, absolutely. This is something that could really change the way you're doing your business alone like we do everything else. Very cool, very cool. Stay tuned after the break. We're going to take a look at uh, even more Thermaltake eSports equipment. We're back from the break here, uh, again with the Thermaltake booth. Um, we have a very interesting gaming setup here uh, to cap off everything we've shown you. Shannon, tell me a bit more about the setup. Well, we showed you the Smart Series. Remember, we had the little competition in Computex. You had the Smart Mouse. Right. You were seeing the, you know, the clicking, the clicking capability, you're able to see how far you're going with that. This has been improved a lot, and we actually added now a keyboard to the Smart Set. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We have our Theron Plus Smart Mouse, and then we have our Poseidon Z Plus, because obviously Poseidon Z is a really awesome keyboard, so we wanted to improve that. Both of these, the reason we call them Smart is because they actually have a Bluetooth transmitter in each one. And what happens is they can trans transmit to this application here. This mobile app will be available on Android or iOS, and this will allow you to basically take all of your gaming data, like I'll show you right now. You can see you have your input Theron Plus, input Poseidon Z Plus. Right, so, so you've got your mouse and your keyboard. So let's say we uh, pick our gaming type. Let's say RTS, just for instance. Sure. <clears throat> Click on that. You can see this timer starts at the top. And you have a whole bunch of fields of data here. So first of all, you have your mouse. You can see the top left. Right. Distance and distance per minute. And then as you start to click, you see total clicks on the right. Your APM, all that stuff starts to add up. So then you add the keyboard part. Now you can see as I'm spamming a bunch of keys, APM just goes nuts. But a really cool feature for someone who's gaming is you can see your top 10 hotkeys, the top 10 keys you've pressed. Right. So now imagine you're gaming. Imagine key WR, WSD, those are your areas where you're primary gaming. Yet you notice one of your top hotkeys maybe is I, O, or P up on the other side. Then you go, wait a minute, maybe I should remap that thing to somewhere where it's less used but closer because this might really help. And that's what happened to me when I was playing VF4. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm using this hotkey over here. It doesn't make sense. It was an I or a P. I can't remember which one it was off the top of my head. But I remapped this thing. It made a huge bit of difference. And this was something I didn't even realize about this program could actually help me was I learned from the data both liftoff time because there's also liftoff count on the mouse. So as you lift it off and you're moving. Right. You start to learn, hey, if I learn how to use a higher DPI, I think of a twitcher, twitchy gamer, and next thing you know, you're not doing liftoffs, you're not having to you know, lose that extra time. When you're talking a very competitive, fast action game, sometimes you only have milliseconds before the other guy gets you. So right. if you're spending that time going like this, you're now done before you ever can start. Correct. Uh, this, that would be extremely handy for first-person shooters, real-time role-playing games. A lot of that, any, anywhere, anywhere where you're constantly moving and, and looking around a map, um, I can see that coming in very handy for anybody who, who wants to be extra competitive in their gaming. Yeah, that, well, yeah, that. Plus, we added a social component to this. There's actually a website, plus.ttesports.com. We're actually creating a social community around this product so that you can actually challenge people, they can challenge you. It basically creates a game outside of the game so you can see all of your activities, you could see like uh, your gameplay statistics, but also down the road you can see you have challenges, club, events. Basically, you can have, we're gonna have total events around things where people try to find the highest click rate. And obviously we know it's gonna be just like you did. Uh, yeah. I remember, I've got uh -huh. pictures of that. <laughs> where you're just beating on the mouse trying to, we know people are gonna do that, but that's okay. We want people to enjoy it besides just, oh, this is better or worse for my StarCraft or my BF4 right. or what have you. We want people to have fun beyond the game. We want to give people something, a, a component that they can learn from to make their game better, that they can, they can use to uh, maybe compare and see maybe where they're making mistakes versus someone else they see who's maybe a pro gamer and sees this, um, you know, they see their gameplay style and realize, hey, you know what, I'm doing this a lot different. Let me try it this way. Maybe they learn to be a better gamer just because of this. I feel a lot better about that if that's what we can deliver. Very cool, very cool. Uh, Shannon, again, thermal take proving that uh, they're really conscious of their consumers, the gamers, the builders, the enthusiasts, all, all the way on down. Uh, thank you very much for your time. This has been an awesome look at, at uh, your CES lineup. Can't wait to see some of these products in our testing labs. Take a look for our consumers. Um, stay tuned. Yet more coverage continuing CES 2015.